Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about a, the sequel to the movie last uh, I talked about last week, which is Screen Two. Um, coming out uh, one year later, 1997. Um, this movie, uh, well, of course, I'm gonna probably talk about spoilers here and there, but you know, this film, you know had a very rushed production. They also had to worry about script leaks because, you know, the first screen film, they weren't really sure if anything would ever happen. Like, you know, uh, they were sort of joking on the set, like, you know, maybe somebody one day will wear the uh, ghost face mask as a Halloween costume, but uh, and they sort of just dismissed that. Like, you know, you know nothing will really happen because <clears throat> you know because of Scream 1 you know uh, at the time you know when that came out again slasher films were basically dead um now one thing I forgot to mention last week because I talked about that film quite a bit obviously um with that movie um you know one thing I think it has an appeal to many people you know the first one in this franchise uh, as a whole you could probably say um but there's multiple things within the Scream movies, you know. Um, you know. Scream is also like a murder mystery also. You know, there's a serial killer going around. But, you know, who's who's doing the killings? You know, you don't know until the end of the film. Certain clues here and there, but then some of those clues are sort of to, done to misdirect you. Um, here, you know, this, uh, film, you know, continues that in that, you know, the, the murder mystery is, angle is still there, who is the killer, you know, different killer, uh, or killers, you know, you never know, uh, they could have one killer at some point, but, you know, uh, but these movies, you know, they uh, have, you know, seem to have like at least uh, multiple killers. That seems to be a thing with these films. So after the first one, you're like, oh. Because the first film, you know, when that, that revelation happened, it was qu quite surprising, you know. Obviously there's like one, like, oh, you know, seems obvious. Like, like Billy is the killer, and you know there's Stu, and he's kind of eccentric, and you know has some signs like he there's something off about him. But there's also a goofiness to him. But then there's also Randy, the movie guy, who knows all about so many movies, uh, horror in particular, and so you know uh, with this film. Oh, following that, uh, the murder mystery angle is still there, and there's now, of course, new rules because you know it's a sequel, so sequels have their own rules also. Um, <clears throat> David Arquette, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, uh, Jamie Kennedy, and uh, Lee Schreiber all return as their characters from the first film. Um, there's also various uh, new people. Um, of course, Sarah Michelle Geller and Jerry O'Connell, Jada Pinkett Smith, um, also Timothy Oliphant, um, and uh, Laurie Metcalf. Um, you know this uh, uh, this film. You know, just uh, has a good continuation. You know, it it. it you know, it, I, I believe it really does honor the first film very well. It's a good continuation with the characters who survived um, and what they're doing, like, some years later, a few years later, because Randy and Sydney are in college, and so now there's new killings going on, and, uh, you know, of course, they have to make, like, the first one, The Boyfriend, played by Jerry O'Connell, you know, 
Derek, you know, he's, he, oh, he has to be, like, the killer, and they have to frame it like he, it's him, like, it's Billy all over again, and then, but that's also too obvious, that would be, like, would it really be him, or no? Um, and, uh, Another important uh, element I want to also say before I get off completely of Scream One, at least as a sort of a sort of final note with these uh, films, um, these uh, these uh, these films are uh, quite comical. There's actually quite a bit of humor, you know, be it dark humor, but you know there is humor, and I think that also kind of helps with like the slasher element of the horror you know there's the murder mystery and you know and the slashing that goes on and all those to get those things together you know depending if one doesn't like horror films you know those things could possibly put off some people but then there's a good amount of humor so that perhaps could maybe entice some people you know it does these movies do take poke fun at the horror genre in a very loving way you know, it's not done maliciously. It's not done to sort of rag on and how horror really sucked in the 90s at that point and how <clears throat> so many of the franchises that were once beloved and enjoyed by so many, now with a new installment, people are kind of getting tired and also of them, like, so they're not making as much money and also some of them were also just not very good. Some of the newer installments... Uh, just we're not good um, so you know there's a, quite a bit of uh, you know sequel references and um, you know Randy's in a film class and they're talking about sequels and how you know there's people saying oh sequels are better than the original or you know, originals are better like the original Alien that's better than the Aliens um, Terminator 1 is better than Terminator 2, but then, you know, when Randy's talked about, you know, like, uh, 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 the Godfather Part 2, you know, maybe that, maybe that's a sequel that could be argued that is better than the first film. You know, that's often discussed and said to be, like, one of the better films. Uh, a film that is better than the original. Um, then later talked about and mentioned like you know empire strikes back is a better film like you know better story and characters and then rain retorts it's not a sequel it's part of a trilogy and was completely planned which you know it is true though i think it is a sequel because it is following the original star wars but you know it is very you know much continuing on with that you know, sort of like how godfather 2 continues the story and a uh, Terminator, you know, Terminator 2, Godfather 2, uh, Aliens, you know, there are sequels that do continue the story, like horror films, you know, horror franchises, there are various horror franchises that do continue the uh, story, you know, Friday the 13th continues, Part 2 picks off a time after Part 1, Halloween 2, like, basically immediately after 1 ends, uh, there is a continued sort of storyline with the Nightmare on Elm Street sequels uh, to an extent, though th that second film isn't, I guess, necessarily a complete direct sequel to the first, uh, though, of course, Freddy Krueger is still in that, um, in those films, and but, you know, now a continuation with, like, a, with the Nancy character, let's say. Whereas, with, like, with Scream, you know, it's a continuation of Sydney and Dewey and Gale. Um, and where they are, you know, and what they're doing. Are they doing similar things, or are they doing things different, or what are they up to? Um, of course, Gale is uh, still uh, reporting. Um, Dewey, uh, when he found out about couple of murders happening in a movie theater at the premiere of Stab, which is the adaptation of uh, 
uh, Gail Weathers' book about the murders of the first film. Uh, you know, they uh, mentioned how, you know, people are sort of pattering the murders uh, as more people go on sort of off of the first film. Like how, you know, the uh, uh, killers um, who are sort of targeting certain people that kind of mirror in a sense, you know, like uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar's character. Her name is in the film Cece, but her actual name is Casey. And in the first film, you know, Casey is played by Drew Barrymore. There's uh, like Maureen, you know, Maureen Prescott, uh, Phil Stevens, you know, Stephen Orth, Maureen Prescott. Uh, all these people have sort of like similar names of people who were killed during or even prior to the first Scream film. Um, and Cotton Weary is out of prison, or out of jail, of course, because, you know, he wasn't the killer, it was... Billy and Stu, um, and so, you know, he didn't kill Marine Prescott, so he gets to go free, and he's promised by Gail to have a sit-down and uh, interview and talking about uh, things uh, with Cotton, and she doesn't know about it, but he's under the pressure she does, and she's agreed to it, so he's sort of, you know, obviously frustrated and also a bit confused by all this the fact that this isn't seemingly going to happen um, uh, you know and uh, I remember watching uh, this uh, for the first time you know not too long after watching the first scream because I got I didn't really watch them right back to back you know it was just the trilogy I just sort of like I watched the first film enjoyed it then I later watched the second I believe like I think it was like a again it was like summer so it wasn't didn't have to necessarily be like a weekend thing so I think I might have actually watched the weekend but um, I think I might have uh, waited a little while here or there after the first film like a day or two, then watch the second film. And I think the next day after that, I watched the third. Um, and, yeah, overall, I do enjoy it. It's a fine film. Um, not better than the first film, but it's very good. Um, of course, the revelations of who is doing the killings, you know, you know, Sydney's friends and stuff, and she's a, uh, doing drama, acting, and it's like her major in college. You know, Randy is doing film, and um, Mickey, uh, Tenemy Theothan's character, is there. He's the one who keeps saying, like, how, you know, yeah, sort of badgering uh, uh, Randy later about the sequels, and how certain ones are better, or at least are perceived as better than the original. Um, uh, speaking of Randy, he unfortunately dies. Um, he's talking on the phone with the killer, and um, who's looking at them, and then Dewey and Gale are with him, and they're all uh, looking for who's the killer, because he's on the phone, obviously, and um, a cell phone, and he's walking around, and sort of like, as Gale and Dewey are going and trying to see who is uh, the killer where is the killer who, who is the killer and then um, Randy gets uh, near the uh, van that uh, uh, that Gail has uh, for you know news stuff uh, to report on um, cameraman has gone to a new cameraman has gone to get a you know, coffee because he's not interested in hearing 
but all this death stuff. And then uh, he, uh, uh, you know, so all that's going on. Uh, Randy's talking to the killer, and then he goes and says how, you know, you know, like how Bailey and Stu were more original than the killer in terms of, like, certain questions being asked and, like, what's your favorite scary movie and all that stuff. Or how they're going about killings and such. And, uh... He, uh... <laughs> was going in on and just insulting, like, you know, how, like, Billy and Stu just really were... Like, just losers, and they sucked, and this and that. And then, as he gets towards the van, the van door opens, and he's pulled inside. And then, the door is closed, you know, so very quickly. And then he's being attacked and by the killer. And then he is, like, stabbed, and I believe, like, in the throat. Um... A very gruesome end for Randy, and many people don't like that. And they don't like that he died in this film. Though many do acknowledge, you know, it was important that a major character uh, dies, you know. But, you know, can't kill off Sydney. She's like the, she's the lead. And, you know, Courtney Cox was very, you know, huge and popular because of Friends in the first film. And also, people really loved... Uh, Dewey, you know, David Arquette, and he was kept alive uh, for the sequel, even though he was originally supposed to die, but he was kept alive. Um, and so, Randy, uh, well, he's basically the guy to, to go, you know. Jamie Kennedy, you know, of course, you know, he's, a, he's very well known, but I guess, you know, he didn't have necessarily like the status that the the other three had that let's say you know and Lee Schreiber was still sort of you know coming up in the fact that he's you know being you know more of a very good and prolific actor that he is now um but yeah Randy also does explain the rules and how like also who the killer's g killer could be and how you know could be a woman could be a black woman and Dewey was with him when he's saying this. How you know, usually white males are killers, but he's was not always. You know, you know, you know, there's Candyman's daughter, for instance. Also, Mrs. Voorhees was a great killer in the original Friday the Thirteenth. Of course, Jason became the, you know, the face of the franchise, especially when he got that hockey mask. But you know, it doesn't always have to be male. Um, there's also misery. Which doesn't really get mentioned, but then again, that's not really a film that, um, you know, has a sequel. You know, it's based off of a book also. Um, but, you know, this film is really, really well done. You know, of course, you know, at the end, spoilers again, uh, you know, Mickey and... Uh, by Timothy Oliphant and um, Debbie Saul, who's actually Billy Loomis's mother, played by Lori Metcalf, are the killers. And, um, you know, with Mrs. Loomis, you know, obviously she's trying to kill Sidney because she killed her son. Um, Mickey wants to sort of be like like those two, but wants to get caught, and he's going to use the defense of, you know, the movies made him do it. The movies made him go and murder people, or, you know, going on a killing spree inspired by, you know, stab, you know, seeing that, and he, <clears throat> you know, also, you know, that being a, or at least as a new horror film that's going on, that was going to come out. And, um, you know, there you go, you know, horror films in particular, you know, got, uh, really inspired him. And, of course, you know, that's just, you know, that's really an excuse that's done to really just make the people who are 
responsible for murders, you know, hopefully, you know, they don't get the full blame. You know, they're not completely responsible. You know, had it not been for those movies, you know, then none of this would have ever happened. Um, but to anybody who really has that kind of mindset, you know, they, they've kind of already... Already, uh, they already have a uh, wires crossed that shouldn't be in there. There's also some uh, few screws loose that shouldn't be. So, you know, people like that are will likely just kill anyway. They'll just find some other excuse if you know movies wasn't able to, uh, you know be the uh, thing that, you know, wasn't going to stick, they'd go into something else, which also reflects the times, you know, there was things like, you know, you know uh, TV and movies are bad, and music and stuff is bad, and, you know, later on, you know, video games, violent video games, and just things how, in a way, they're just sort of like a commentary on what, you know, people were blaming, and so... There's various people blaming certain things, like horror films. Well, well, you know, somebody's killing. So, in the, in the sort of a sort of pattern of su uh, a certain horror film that is new and all that, and so I'm going to go with that and just uh, you know they're just gonna go with that as their defense, and you know, hey, you know. It's not my fault completely, you know, hey, had I not seen those movies, you know, giving me ideas, you know, I wouldn't have killed anybody. Um, and then, of course, you know, Mickey gets killed, uh, or at least we think, uh, by uh, Mrs. Loomis, who then tries to, and also uh, Gail gets shot by Mickey. Uh, also, Dewey gets stabbed again. Um, and it seems like he's supposed to die, but, you know, everybody likes Dewey, so he gets to live. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah. And the end, uh, uh, and he kills Mrs. Loomis, and, uh, you know, with the help of, you know, Cotton, who comes and gets a gun that, uh, Mickey had that. And, uh, was framing it so Sydney dies, Mickey dies, you know. And, you know, and Dibby Salt doesn't exist, but, you know, Cotton shoots uh, Mrs., you know, Loomis, and then uh, Mickey comes back to life. Like, he wasn't actually dead. Sort of like that horror thing, uh, movie trope, like, just when you think that killer is dead. Uh, they're not. They come back to just scare you one more time, and Gail uh, gets a gun and you know, shoot and kill Mickey, and then Cindy just shoots uh, 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 Mrs. Loomis in the head. Uh, and Dewey goes to the hospital, Gail goes with him, and then um, Cotton essentially gets what he kind of wanted, you know. Gets the media and people uh, asking him questions about this and that and how he's sort of like seen now as a hero. Um, and it all seems good. Um, now I mentioned how this film had some problems with like, scripts leaking, um, you know, and so they had to consistently, you know, Try to keep things as secret as possible. Have various uh, v v endings and kills, like who gets killed and who doesn't. Um, but you know, uh, at the end of it all, uh, this film is very good. You know, may not be better than the first film, but it's very hard for a sequel to top the original. You know, it can be done, but not always. 
Um, but yeah, uh, this is a very uh, excellent film. You know, I enjoy rewatching it. Um, usually in a marathon form, I usually find myself watching the original more often. But you know, it's nice to rewatch the sequels also. So yeah, um, with that, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a uh, great day, great weekend, and hope you all have a great week. Um, and I'll see you all next time to talk about uh, the third installment. You know, in you know, at one point the originally the final installment in the Scream trilogy, which is no longer a trilogy. Um, but until next time. Wish you all the best. See you next time.